everybody. Welcome to the Full Court Press. I am your host, Drew Duncan. Do not forget that Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is all at Drew Duncan 83 Additionally, you can find me on YouTube, simply look for Drew Duncan. And of course, the Full Court Press is on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. And don't forget, you can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts via iHeart, Spreaker, Spotify, Google Podcasts, etc. Simply tell you the device to play the Full Court Press by Drew Duncan. Auburn overcomes themselves and ends up defeating the Oregon Ducks on Saturday night. And I don't use that term loosely at all. Auburn legitimately overcame themselves with good defense and good enough offense down the stretch in order to win that football game. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be reflective on the Last couple of minutes of that football game, especially the last play, which was a hell of a catch by Seth Williams. And a really good fourth down conversion by Bo Nix on fourth and three. In this world that we live in where quarterbacks a lot of times will try to force that play, you know, throw it to somebody downfield and either get picked off or just an incompletion or whatever the case may be. Bo Nix did make an incredible effort to get that first down and keep the ball moving. But overall, I felt that the reason why Auburn won this football game was because of their defense. Because look, Oregon, right out of the gate, first possession, man, they score. They were aggressive with their play calling. They converted the fourth and one down on the goal line, and they end up with a touchdown. On the next possession, Auburn, on their first possession, I should say, they go three and out, and then Oregon's in good field position, right, because they return that punt for 28 yards, if I remember correctly, but they couldn't score a touchdown, and then they miss the field goal. On the next possession, right, Auburn, 40-yard pass down the field, but they could not finish the drive with a touchdown. Eventually, Oregon would take the lead 14-3 to on what was a hell of a catch by Webb. Then Auburn would hit another big play, but Oregon would pick the ball off, right? But they can't turn that into points because Auburn stopped them. Then Auburn would force a turnover against Oregon, but a hustle play, right? A hustle play by Addison, prevents Bryant from going into the end zone. Auburn can't get a touchdown, even though they've got the ball in the what? One, two yard line. They actually ended up moving backwards, if I remember correctly, during the course of that possession. So they only get a field goal. So offensively, this football team was not very good. And then a lot of people, again, they're going to talk about that last play. But the play calling on that drive really kind of blew my mind away, right? Second down, nine yards to go. You've got a minute to go in the game. They're trying to run the football up the middle, nonetheless. And then out of nowhere, they go, well, we're just going to go ahead and throw it deep after Bo Nix converts that first down, and we're going to try and end the game, which they do. Which, by the way, Seth Williams... Uh, Not only did he make an incredible catch because that ball was bobbled up in the air because of the defense that was played by Oregon. So the concentration in that moment was incredible. So it wasn't just a great catch. It was a phenomenal catch. I look at the play calling from Auburn throughout the course of this football game. I look at how their defense kept them in it because I'm going to tell you something. Bo Nix threw, what was it, two interceptions in the first half? If it hadn't have been for that Auburn defense, Oregon would have been blowing out Auburn at halftime. The game may have even been over by halftime. Look, it's not that I'm taking anything away from Bo Nix and the Auburn Tigers. It's not that his you know, story isn't really cool, right? He was there for the championship game, and he knew right away that he wanted to play for Auburn, and You know, being a quarterback at this level, especially a freshman quarterback, and your first game is against a top 15 ranked team going into this season. A lot of people have, uh, I still think, somewhat high expectations for Oregon. It is only one loss at this juncture. And so with the 
inception of the playoff. One loss doesn't necessarily knock you out of contention. You could potentially still win a conference championship and end up playing in a playoff game. So one loss doesn't destroy your entire season. But the fact of the matter is simply this. Auburn's defense was incredible. And they carried that football team because, remember, Oregon jumps out and goes up 21-6 to in that third quarter. And the rest of the way, Auburn did show some tenacity. Bo Nix definitely picks up the pace, plays a much better second half. I think in the first half he was... Six out of 18 for two interceptions, if I remember correctly, far more efficient in the second half of that football game, particularly the fourth quarter. The offense does pick up, but the defense put them in some really good positions. And one of the constant themes that I've seen so far throughout all of college football, which is going to ring true, I think, for both of these football teams, is number one, scoring in the red zone, and number two, making field goals. Remember, Oregon missed a field goal that would have put them up big in the first half. There's a big difference between 14-6 and 17-6, believe it or not. And those extra three points could have made a huge difference in that football game. Regardless, Auburn skates out of there with a victory. They're able to come away with one, uh, but they really snuck out one against Oregon who I felt the play calling for them, which was, I thought, really good in the first half, uh, really seemed to slow down a lot in the second half. But again, to me, the credit has to go to the Auburn defense. Uh, so many times we just point at the offense, and, and I do this myself, and it's very easy to say, well, the offense just wasn't very good. In some instances, that is absolutely the case. On Saturday night, the case was Auburn just had a much better defense. If they take those two turnovers and that good field position off of the punt return and they score points off of that, we're talking about an extra 21 points potentially in the first half. Legitimately, Oregon could have had 35 points in the first half of play. The game would have been over. They would have scored that touchdown in the third quarter. At that point, they would have been up 42-6. to six. That would have been it. It wouldn't have mattered about any type of late rally from Auburn. It just would have been seen as garbage yardage. The game was in doubt, and they were just kind of, you know, slowing down and, and not really wanting guys to get hurt and kind of minding their time and running the football and just trying to end the football game. So I've got to give credit to the Auburn defense because they absolutely kept them in that football game. Because, again, think about it. Bryant makes that great play on defense and gets stopped by an incredible hustle play by Oregon short of the goal line. And Auburn, even though they're right there, they simply cannot put it in. It's harder to score down in that goal line than you think it is. But when you've got a big physical football team and you're in the SEC and you're used to playing big physical football, you would think that Auburn would be able to impose their will, but instead it was kind of jumpy play calling with so many play action pass plays. Regardless, moving forward, Auburn's not going to play again until September 14th against a, an opponent that they should easily dominate. I believe it's Stephen F. Austin or Stephen Pay, one of the, you know, Austin Pay, one of those two schools. And as far as Oregon goes, look, I'm not the biggest fan of Pac-12 football per se. I know that those guys are over there playing each other. and uh, But right now, to me, Utah is the most impressive team out of the Pac-12 that I've seen play so far. Um, Stanford, obviously, their quarterback gets hurt in the Northwestern game. Um, so I, I think right now the Pac-12 probably belongs to Utah at this moment. It is only one week. We'll see, obviously, as the season progresses. Uh, but again, the bottom line to me is Auburn's defense does the job. That's what kept them in the football game. And that is ultimately why they didn't get blown out and came away with a victory. Uh, even though that was a hell of a catch by Williams to close out that football game.
Guys, I am Drew Duncan, host of the Full Court Press. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is all at DrewDuncan83. Additionally, you can find me on YouTube. Simply look for Drew Duncan. And, of course, the Full Court Press is on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. And don't forget, you can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. Simply tell your device to play the Full Court Press by Drew Duncan. And, as always, don't you dare touch that dial.